So, hi. Um, tell me your name and where are you from? My name is Kate Metcalf, and I'm an assistant dean at Marquette University, but I actually am, which is, by the way, located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I'm actually a Colorado girl myself, so I hail from Centennial, Colorado. Well, we're glad to have you back here in Denver for the uh, college fairs. Um, students ask me a lot about what is a Jesuit university. I mean, Marquette's a Jesuit school, and there are other Jesuit schools all around the country, yeah. but what does that really mean? What is a Jesuit education all about? Sure. Well, there's 28 different Jesuit universities throughout the United States, and each of them have their own flavor and feel, but all of them follow the mission and the founding of the Jesuits. And the Jesuits, particularly, are a Catholic order of priests started over 450 years ago by St. Ignatius Loyola, and this story, which is super cool. St. Ignatius was essentially, at the bit, during his career, was a soldier, and during one of his soldierly tours, he injured his leg by a cannonball, and he was in the infirmary, one leg is just essentially pretty hurt, and he was looking around and he noticed that other soldiers like himself were at a loss at what to do now because they were so injured they were unable to perform their soldierly duties and provide for their families. Mm -hmm. And essentially he was a very well educated man and he felt that he now had a calling to help educate others, to teach new professions so that these individuals who were suffering were then able to provide for their families, have a life. And at the end of the day, that's what a Jesuit education is about. It's a well-rounded education. It's a hands-on education. It's an education rooted in service, education, leadership, and faith, and knowing a little bit of something about everything. We're going to make you fabulous at a cocktail party. You're going to be able to talk about a variety of different subjects. Biggest thing about Jesuit education that I think makes it stand apart is the fact that it's rooted in service learning. We're going to try to take a real-world example of whatever it is you're trying to study and have you help someone else with it. So take accounting, for example. Accounting students will do taxes for families who may not be able to afford that assistance. So students in a classroom are actually doing taxes, and they're helping someone else out with that. So you're not just talking about it. You're not just conceptualizing. You're actually doing taxes. You're actually helping somebody and learning by doing, not by just hearing about it. Tell me, though, that, um, a lot of kids here, they, they hear Jesuit first, and they don't know what that means. So we were laughing about Jesuit. Right. And, um, and then they find out, okay, that's Catholic. Mm -hmm. So what is that like? I mean, do you have to be Catholic to go there? Is no. it, is it, is, do they kind of, is it, you're going to become ev evangelical kind of place no. where you're going to have to become a Catholic yeah. to be there? No, the Jesuits are a very open-minded group. They're big on you. They're never going to tell you what to think, what to feel, or how to believe. But they're going to challenge you to do all three. They're really open to learning from, from, other, from other people, from other backgrounds. And in their core curriculum, and I say core curriculum because no matter what you are studying, you're going to be taking core classes, Englishes, histories, math, sciences. You're going to be taking also philosophy, psychology, ethics, and the big white elephant in the room, you're going to be taking a theology class. Hmm. And essentially, you take all these subject matters at a broad sense intro into college level history, into theology. And the intro into college level theology would be in a Christian context. So though it is Christian based, it looks at different Christianities. It's not just purely Catholic. And the reason for it is because we learn from dialogue about different opportunities. Now, you don't have to be Catholic to attend a Jesuit university. It is not a requirement. You do not have to go to mass. There is no religious, really overwhelming component depending upon how you want to do it. If you would like to go to Mass, you can. My roommate in college I often talk about was Jewish. The first time she was looking for a synagogue, who do we meet but one of the Jesuits who told her not only how to get there, but also provided transportation. So I mean, the Jesuits are big on, as I said before, not telling you how to think, feel, or believe, but wanting you to practice and really explore both of the, all those options for yourself. So, so what? So let's say I'm not a, I'm not a Catholic. I'm not even a Christian, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Why would what what would be some of the other reasons why I might consider going to a place like um, Marquette? Sure. I think if you are a student who are looking to learn about a variety of different perspectives, if you really like engaging in conversation and learning about the world, uh, the Jesuits are big on really not only, and I take away the theology component, but also look at different cultures, backgrounds. Everybody brings something different to the table, even in your student population where you come from, what you're interested in, your family traditions, all make you part of who you are. And if you think about an education like that, if you think about 
classes and opportunities, you are able to pick those. I have an unhealthy obsession with Ireland. I will take classes in Irish history, Irish literature, probably would take Gaelic if it was available to me. For students, that's what's really cool about Jesuit education, is you can really learn about things, even outside your major, in a different way. Study abroad is really big on all of these campuses, um, not just talking about something. The Jesuits themselves actually have to study for an additional amount of time, I believe it's seven additional years, before they even become a Jesuit. And that's not theology. That's a subject area that they're passionate about, that they want to learn about. And essentially, they can be your mentors, they could be your friends, or they could be another Joe Schmo you meet on the street. It all depends on how you want to interact with them. But if you ask them a particular question in the subject area of their interest, sit down, because they're going to have a lot to say. They study it through a variety of different lenses. They study it through cultural lenses, theological uh, lenses, and that, I slaughtered that word. But also, they look at it from different perspectives and backgrounds, socioeconomics. So they really, they really are in edu well educated and interesting men. So a well rounded education by well rounded people. Yeah. I would like to think, though, I don't want to make it sound like a utopia. You know, I do believe that we try to do the best we possibly can with education and we try to look at it from a variety of different contexts. But I say we, because a Jesuit education tends to be a community. You know, it's definitely a place where you're going to feel, and as an individual, you're going to have opportunities for just you, but you're definitely going to be a part of the community. So they're medium-sized as a whole, typically. They can range from the small to the medium. We never really get bigger, I believe, than 14,000. So they're, they're a place, if you're, if you're a well-rounded, engaged student who likes to look at things from a variety of different contexts and wants to know the most they possibly can about a subject matter, go to a Jesuit university.